Okay, here's a review for the last unit of grade 10 math. Okay, I did the first two units. It took me about 50 minutes. Okay, I want my goal is to get all of grade 10 done in one hour. So I'm going to try and get through this unit in 10 minutes. So I'm going to go quickly, quickly, quickly. I'm not going to review much about how we got the rules or um, anything like that, but I'm going to just quickly go through how to use them. If you want to remember how we, how we got the rules and why we're doing what we're doing, you might want to go back and watch some of the previous videos I posted um, earlier in the year. Okay, so quickly, um, unit three was trigonometry. We did trigonometry of right triangles, then trigonometry of acute triangles. We remember trigonometry of right triangles. Okay, we learned SOHCAHTOA. We learned the trig ratios. Sine is equal to op sine of an angle equals the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle equals the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And the tan of an angle equals the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side. Labeling it a right triangle, if the reference angle is here, opposite the side opposite from the angle. Hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. Adjacent is always right beside our reference angle, right there. Okay? So let's you and, oh, and then, um, so we learned how we can use SOHCAHTOA for right angle triangles, but what if we have a triangle that's not a right angle triangle? What if we have an acute triangle where all the degrees are under 90 degrees? Um, we can use the sine law and the cosine law. Here's the sine law. Ratio of a side over the sine of its opposite angle is equal for each side. We only use two ratios at a time. Okay? We're always going to be given um, three pieces of information, solve for a fourth. So you choose which two ratios to use at a time depending on what pieces of information you're given. Okay, so you might use these two, you might use these two, or you might use those two depending on what you're given and what you want to solve for. Okay, or we can use the cosine law. There's two cases you use the cosine law. Use the cosine law if you want to find an angle when you're given three sides. Okay, so if you're given all three sides of an acute triangle, you can find an angle using this formula. Or if you want to find uh, a side when you're given two sides and a contained angle, that's the important part here, a contained angle. Okay, two sides and a contained angle, you use these formulas here. It's important to recognize the pattern. An unknown side squared equals adding the squares of the known sides minus two times those known sides times the cosine of the contained angle. Okay, so it's important to recognize those patterns. And then these formulas are just rearranged to solve for an angle and we know all three sides. Okay, let's put some of these plans into action. Um, oh, let's just quickly review when you can use what. Um, so SOHCAHTOA, whenever you see a right angle triangle, use SOHCAHTOA. So sine, opposite, hypotenuse, cosine, adjacent, or hypotenuse, tan, opposite, over adjacent. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, when can we use sine law? Sine law, you can find an unknown side if you know two angles and, um, and a side. Okay. Or you can find an unknown angle if you know two sides and the angle opposite one of the known sides. That's important. Okay. Um, when you use cosine law, I already talked about this, use cosine law to find a missing side when you're given two sides and a contained angle or to find an angle if you know all three sides. Okay, so what I do when I look at an acute triangle, I try and see if I should use cosine law. Okay, so if I have these triangles here, try and see which ones I use cosine law for. I use cosine law for this one because I have two sides and the angle contained by the two sides. I also use cosine law for this one because I'm given all three sides and it's asking me to find an angle here. Okay, so those are the two scenarios I use cosine law. These ones, I'm given two angles. Okay, I'm given two angles and a side. I use sine law for that one. Okay, um, the, that's the scenario number one right here. And for this one here, I'm given two sides and an angle opposite one of the sides. Okay, um, opposite one of the sides. I use sine law for that as well. Sine. Okay. If you need to review when to use what more, go back watch the videos for um, chapter eight. Okay. Um, Find the value of x. I have a right angle triangle. I know I want to use SOHCAHTOA. Okay? That should click in your brain right away. Right angle triangle, SOHCAHTOA. Good. So um, here's my reference angle. That means this is the opposite side. Here's the hypotenuse across the right angle. Opposite hypotenuse, that's the sine ratio. So sine of 41 equals opposite hypotenuse, x over 30. Solve for x, multiply the 30 to the other side. 30 sine 41 is equal to x. Solve for x. Okay, 30 sine 41 is equal to 19.7, 19.7 meters. Don't forget your units. Good. Um, what if I'm given two sides and I want to find an angle? No problem. This is a right angle triangle. I know I want to use SOHCAHTOA. Um, here's my reference angle. This is the opposite. This is the adjacent. Adjacent side right beside the angle. Okay. Um, ratio is opposite adjacent. That's tan. So the tan of an angle equals opposite over adjacent, 3 over 7. If I want to find an angle, I have to use inverse tan ratio. Okay. So um, if I want to find an angle, I use the inverse trig ratio, so I use inverse tan to find the angle. When I do use inverse tan, that's telling my calculator that I don't know the angle, but I know the side ratio, tell me the angle, okay? So always finding an angle, use the inverse ratio, okay? When you're finding a side, you use the regular ratio. Finding an angle, you use the inverse ratio, okay? So on your calculator, inverse tan of 3 divided by 7, 
and you should get 23.2. 23.2 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Okay. Okay, this is not a right angle triangle, so throw a Sokotoa out the window. Um, I have two angles and a side. I know that's the case for the sine law. Sine law tells me that the ratio of a side over its opposite angle, so a side over the sine of its opposite angle, so 8 over sine 68, should be equal for each side. So R over sine 57 should be equal to 8 over sine 68. To solve for R, multiply the sine 57 to the other side. So 8 times sine 57 over sine 68 should be equal to R. Put that on my calculator, 8 times sine 57 divided by sine 68. Make sure you close your bracket before you divide. And I should get 7.2. R equals 7.2. What are my units here? Centimeters. 7.2 centimeters. Don't forget your units. Good. Um, next question. I have two sides and a contained angle, and I want to find a third side. I need to use the, co the cosine law. I know the cosine law tells me an unknown side squared equals adding the squares of the known sides, 14 squared plus 11 squared, minus 2 times those two known sides, 14 times 11, times cosine of the contained angle. Okay, put all that on your calculator, evaluate it, and then take the square root of it, because d squared is equal to this, so evaluate that, then square root to find out what d is equal to. Um, when you do that, you should get 16.6 centimeters. Good. I think I might get this done in under 10 minutes. Good. Um, last question. I have three sides. Need to find an unknown angle. I can use the cosine law. I just have to use the rearranged cosine law. I know that um, the cosine. Oh, where'd my pencil go? Cosine of a contained angle is equal to. I have to remember the pattern. Cosine of a contained angle equals the square of the opposite side minus the squares of the other two sides. The order of the second two does not matter, but if I'm finding the angle A, I must um, start with side A squared and then subtract the other two, the squares of the other two. 11 squared minus 10 squared, and then divide by negative 2 times those second two, times 11 times 10. Good. So I'm going to evaluate this. Okay. I'm going to evaluate that. And then what I'm going to do, because I'm trying to find the cos, cos, um, cos A, I know cos A is equal to this, sorry. Cos A is equal to this. So once I've evaluated this whole thing, okay, do the numerator, then the denominator, okay, once I've evaluated, and then once I've evaluated that ratio, okay, I need to do the inverse cosine of that answer. So angle A equals inverse cosine of this whole thing. So of my answer for that whole ratio. Okay. When you do that, because when we're finding an angle, we use inverse ratios. Okay. So the inverse cosine of that whole thing, you should get 50.5 degrees when you put that on your calculator. Okay. So make sure you evaluate this. Okay. Make sure you put brackets in the right spot on your calculator. The brackets are on the numerator and the denominator. That way your calculator knows to evaluate that and then divide it by this whole product. Okay. And then do the inverse cosine of that answer. You'll get your angle. Okay. So that's all of grade 10 math. I covered it in just under an hour, I think, okay? Make sure you don't only use this for your to study, okay? Um, just use this as a refresher to um, remind you what you need to work on and what you are confident with, okay? So go back and do some questions, um, review your notes, review your old tests, make sure you complete your review package, make sure you are ready for the exam, and best of luck.